In network security, the world is moving towards something called zero trust. And a lot of people say this makes VPNs irrelevant. Does it? So Brian, what is zero trust? So zero trust is kind of a shift in how a lot of corporate IT people have been approaching things, where before you used to have kind of a secure network, and if you were not in the office, then you'd use a VPN and get to the secure network at the office. Right. If you're plugged into stuff. an Ethernet jack at the office, you must be a good guy. Exactly. And so you could have all sorts of services running that people in your company are supposed to be able to access. And since they're on the secure network, they'd be able to access it and you'd trust them. And so zero trust basically is don't trust anybody you can put your services right on the internet and anybody that needs to come in, they need to authenticate with actual like secure, you know, methods. Right. So don't trust anybody. Make well, you know, anybody check in everybody this that's case coming in. Being any IP address. Exactly. Any yep. computer, right? Every every device, every time, basically you're authenticating. You're making sure. I've that heard people be insulted, right? Our company <laughs> is implementing zero trust. You know, they have no <laughs> trust in the employees or whatever. It's not about the employees. Right. It's, right. It's Ethernet jacks and IP addresses. They don't Trust. Right. And your phone, just because you access something with your phone yesterday, maybe doesn't mean that you should be able to access it today. You know, you don't know who's using it. So basically every time anything is accessing something, the authentication, make sure you know who they are. What kind of authentication do they, how do they know that you are who you say you are? So I mean, there are things like, you know, the FIDO hardware tokens that a lot of companies use. There's also, if you're using stuff on mobile device, there's nice integration for pass keys and biometric, you know, face ID and touch ID and all that stuff too. So all that stuff can play into on top of like a good password policy. Right. When your username, password, and then it texts you a link. Exactly. Yep. But a lot of people are saying not to trust texts anymore. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, for stuff you really care, if somebody really wants to, to get a text that's supposed to go to you, they can do it. They can pay up. And so, yeah, in general, I wouldn't use SMS. What the heck is OpenID Connect? OpenID Connect is a kind of a standard for how different services should be able to authenticate. So if you have all of your accounts managed in Google Workspace, for instance, OpenID Connect lets you kind of tie in other applications so you can have authentication through that kind of one set of users and, and one set of way of authenticating yourself. And so there's a bunch of different open ID connect identity providers and a bunch of different ways that you can sort of integrate your services to use it. But right. So we use you know Gmail, of course, for our email. And I love it that a lot of our internal apps, you, you log in with your Gmail account. Yep. And that's the open ID connect. Huh? Exactly. Yep. So we can have multi-factor auth and kind of one place to manage our users. So no matter you know, how many apps we, we tie into it. Yeah. So in this world where no computer is trusted, what is the point of a VPN? I mean, just because that model of once somebody's on the VPN, then you should be able to trust them and they should be able to access corporate stuff. There's all kinds of other uses for VPN. So speed of five, obviously, you know, we have channel bonding. There's all sorts of cool things you can do on top of VPN technology. And same thing. Like what? So <laughs> he asks innocently. <Yeah. laughs> so appearing like you're in another country than you are and being able to combine all your internet connections for better speed, better reliability. There's still a lot of stuff that a, a cool VPN can do. Yeah, there's just a lot of examples these days of people with bad internet connections, or even if they just have one connection, speed of finds out fixing it, right? Because right. it's got the, the error correction that fixes your DNS server and all this stuff. And so there's a lot of people with terrible internet connections. We're just running Speedify on top makes the internet faster. That's what we do. So can you still use a VPN inside of one of these zero trust frameworks? Sure. So zero trust is really just kind of putting better authentication in front of some existing service. So shared files or something, it's really just putting more authentication across that. So absolutely, you can use zero trust stuff on top of a VPN for sure. So in this modern zero trust world where everything's HTTPS and security token, is there still a need for a VPN to protect you from people sniffing on your Wi-Fi? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, just because you're accessing a zero trust service and you know, it's authenticating, it's making sure it knows who you are. Anybody that's watching your traffic, even if it's all secured through HTTPS, can still learn a lot about what you're doing, what you're accessing, how much time you're spending on different websites. Just by watching what IPs you're connecting to and what domain names they're resolving to and stuff like that, they can really put a pattern of what all of your web browsing is over the course of however much time they're watching. So yes, yeah, so I guess most of the time when you connect to a secure site, the first packet has what SNI server network information. Yeah. Server, server name, name information. information. Exactly. Yes. So it, yes. it gives away exactly what site you're talking to. Yes. Yep. And so a VPN, you know, takes all of your traffic and kind of encapsulates it and puts another layer of encryption on that. And so watching VPN traffic, you can't really tell that this person was on Facebook for 11 hours or whatever. So that kind of meta, well, meta, meta information can be really revealing. Right? Definitely. Definitely. If you like this, subscribe for more detailed discussions about technical topics like this.